Stan here at Radio Liberty. Coming to you from the hills overlooking beautiful and picturesque Monterey Bay and, and bringing you the news behind the news, the story behind the story. Hoping to convince you that reality is usually scoffed at and that illusion is usually king. But in the battle for the survival of Christian civilization, it's going to be reality and not illusion or delusion that will determine what the future will bring. And I have to remind you the views expressed here are not necessarily those of the owners, management, staff, sponsors, or supporters of the station you're listening to. They happen to be my views. And, well, for the next hour, they're going to be the views of Russ Dizdar, who we've had on before many times, talking about the spiritual battle, which is the basis of the political and cultural and ideological battle that most people talk about. And yet, of course, what the real problem facing America, the world today, is the spiritual battle. Hi, Russ. How are you doing tonight? Uh, doing very good, Dr. Stan. Good to be with you again. And uh, it was great to see you at Peak and Peak. And uh, but glad to be here tonight. Well, we certainly yeah, this was at Colorado Springs when uh, we were speaking there, and Russ was there. I've got a chance to meet him. He's much younger than I anticipated, uh, but of course, he certainly is a very uh, forceful voice in this whole spiritual battle, trying to get people to understand that if we look at the, everything from a political or ideological point of view, so many things just don't make sense. Once you understand their powerful uh, spiritual forces working behind the scenes everything begins to make sense and we begin to see that we're living in a prophetic time and we're actually seeing prophecy unfolding before our very eyes certainly we're told in Isaiah 17 about the destruction of Damascus Damascus has been there oh, well over 3,000 years it's never been destroyed It's uh, parts of it, large segments of the suburbs have been destroyed and I think, uh, well I can't say for certain but I certainly suspect that before the current conflict is over, Damascus will be in ruins, just as we were told thousands of years ago. But Russ, you pick up the story, your view of what's going on today. Sure, thank you. We um, we agree with you there. I mean, this is amazing in the Middle East, what's happening and the volatile uh, nature of that Middle East and how much more is going to happen there and prophecies. We have a thousand prophecies in Scripture probably over 500 fulfilled and another close to that yet to be and and um again with the uh, accuracy that we see uh from the hand of god uh, so many things that have been fulfilled and are being fulfilled and just pointing to that middle east but it all comes back to that spiritual warfare dr stan that you talked about it all begins with that the fall of the human race and what we're going through now and I was talking with some friends earlier today and, and mentioned to them that if we just look at the world right now, shooting at the Capitol Hill today, the shooter in the Navy Yard, the volatile nature of the Middle East, the cultural decline, and we look at tens of thousands of people experiencing spiritual visitations, some call sleep paralysis, the moral decadence, all the things that are happening, if we just sat back and thought of it in physical terms, it really seems like a crazy world. We don't understand it. We don't know why it's going. People are praying, hoping that there's some kind of hope out there. But there's a spiritual battle. There's agenda. We know about the dark side. We know about demonic presence. But Satan is real. That dark side is real. The Bible unveils not only his presence, but how he works, his methods. But the biggest thing to understand is the agenda. There is a global agenda of the dark side. And this is now being played out, that there's going to be this development of chaos and anarchy and destabilization with the ultimate goal of bringing in this final, demonically, satanically inspired political, economic, military system. And we're very close to all of that breaking out, I think. When we look at biblical prophecy, we can see what Jesus said about the end of days, what biblical prophecy in Daniel said. And I think people have to understand there's all sorts of violence and murders and genocide going on in Africa, but our attention is still primarily focused on the area around Israel, around the Holy Land. Why? Because that is where the center of history is, according to God's plan. Rush, you go right ahead. Sure, and then with all of this that is going on right now, we know that God has a plan, and that is working right now in the world. God is at work in the world. But I think what we're seeing, what people are seeing, what the news media is seeing, and what's happening politically, economically, and all the rest, there's a spiritual backdrop. 
And here's how we can look at it. I just came back from Germany just about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. We went there to do some prayer, and what we do at Babelsberg Castle, this is the Himmler Castle. We go back again to the Germans, and we realize the war they went through in World War I and the losses and everything, a hurting nation. But what happened then was that all of these cults and secret societies and kind of like a dark side spiritual invasion that really began to guide the nation in the wrong direction. And so the Nazi regime as we know it begins. What we don't understand is that the political ideology, what they believe, what they wanted to accomplish, was all spiritually given. Their quest for a 1,000-year Reich, their quest to build a super race of godmen, a master race, was a spiritually given concept. Their concept of wiping out of all of Israel and anyone else that would be in the way and just annihilating. We see that it was spiritual, dark side, revelation, power, workings that guided them. I visited the Hall of the Dead, what's called Bahala, the Himmler Castle, where rituals were done. Even Colonel Michael Aquino went there and did the Vadelsberg working, a very dark summoning of demon powers. This castle it was called the center of the world. This is where the dark powers would be raised, where Nazi generals would be given what they believed superior insights in these entities to rule the world. Now, from there, Dr. Stan, we went to Poland, to Auschwitz. And we've seen all the pictures, and we've seen all of the slides, and yet we go there to walk the streets. We go to the barracks, the one where we see in Corey Ten Boone's movie or Schindler's List. We went into the gas chamber areas to where the ovens were, and it's unreal to see that all of that 70 years ago where so many people were just annihilated. It was like a factory that just simply annihilated humanity. There was 900 other camps, too. Hold up. We'll be back in just a moment here. The guest is Russ Dizdar. He's just back from Germany, taking a trip over there as they analyzed that they went through the Nazi movement. Now, the Nazi movement was a very successful movement. It was a spiritual movement aimed at bringing about a thousand-year rice, and there were a lot of people who were just taken in by this. Germany was going to reform the world. There was going to be this super race of people. They were going to do away with the Jews. And basically, of course, in their process of doing away with the Jews, why they were instrumental and helping to establish the Jewish homeland, which had been prophesied 2,000 years ago. They go to Auschwitz. So many Jews were killed, and this was simply one of the centers. I mean, I've heard all the arguments, oh, well, maybe they only killed a half a million Jews or three-quarters of a million Jews. Basically, I've talked to John Loftus, who had a security clearance three levels above top secret. He talked about the two million Jews who were actually killed in Belarus. Two million Jews. You never heard about that. And basically, of course, so much of what happened there, I talked to John. I said, do you really think they really killed six million Jews? He said, look, I think they killed a lot more than that. I think that's a low number. People have a difficult time understanding the horror that existed under Adolf Hitler, but even a harder time understanding the spirits of forces that energized the Nazi movement or the fact that such the vast majority of the Nazi war criminals escaped to South America in something called the Rat Line, R-A-T. The Rat Line, you can read about it on the Internet, and certainly all the evidence is that Adolf Hitler escaped as well. And most of what we think we know about that era isn't true. Why? Because our reality is shaped by those who control the media and largely determine what we think and believe. That's why we need to break free and be able to think independently and understand the spiritual forces that energize the Nazi movement. And those same forces are at work in America today. Go right ahead to us. And that's what I agree with. That's the point. What we've seen in the past was not just a historical thing, a physical thing, just the battle of nations. It was a spiritually driven development and all of the destruction that came from that. And you're absolutely right about that same spiritual presence, same dark side, is now on a global scale developing the same principles. Whether you look at transhumanism or the underground satanic ritual abuse, whether you look into the ufology, 
the old occultism even now, they're all looking for the same thing, somehow to alter humanity and make it a God-man or an evolution to Godhood development, somehow to look for another new world order, the same premise, and it's all spiritually driven. Back then, dark side spirits guided them, and I call it charged, that is, demonically charged ideology politically. And that's what we have here now. It's not just socialism. It's not just political battlings that go back and forth. There's really a kind of charged ideology that has been developing and embedding itself all around the world. I listened to a speech by Russia's Mr. Putin not too long ago, and, and he spoke at this at a meeting of globalist leaders around the world and journalists. And I remember him talking about all the troubles in the world right now, and he says these words then. Everybody's afraid. Everybody's afraid. Therefore, we must build a global security force. And that's by right into the chaos that will push a new order, that will demand the kind of controls. We're in the midst of that. We're in a spiritual battle on a global scale, but it does come back down to the personal where we see shooters at the Navy Yard, at the Capitol today, where we see bizarre occurrences and the new levels of drugs in the popular music industry and so forth. That's what the Bible predicted. There would be an outpouring of demonic presence, demonic guidance, demonic engagement with humanity as never before. And in the midst of all of this, the news still is that Jesus has the answer in salvation, his power, his grace, his might. This is the answer to all of this. But there is a reason why we see the world sliding so downward. It's because of that real presence of dark side, demonic, satanic, operative in the world. And we can expect more, but we can also know that God has his sovereign purpose and plan that there will be a day in which the Lord Jesus Christ returns and the Prince of Peace ends all of that in the future and stops it forever. I mean, we all want it stopped. We all want wars and raping and killing and diseases and corruption in government. We all want that to stop. And the good news, the answer for personal salvation and the answer for history is salvation down the road is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I appreciate that you have a program that allows that message to continue for so long, Dr. Stan. Well, we simply uh, we present the same message over and over again under some different auspices, different versions of it, but that is the recurrent theme. And what a privilege it is to have a voice at a time like this. Go right ahead, Russ. And then I think from the meetings there, I wanted to mention, too, that a few months back, one of our guys, Tom Dunn and I, we got an open door, and I really thought it was by God's hand. In New York City, they had the transhumanist meeting here months back. Dr. Ray Kurzweil, most of the top scientists and technological inventors and physicists, they were all going to be in New York at the transhumanist meeting called the 2045. Now, we got into that meeting, and we listened to the speeches. We talked with many people in the crowd. We listened as scientists after scientists discussed their version of developing immortality, that they would eventually arrive at building a kind of technologically guided avatar body and that somehow they would be able to grab a hold of human consciousness and download it and that we could continue to live and eventually their goal by 2045, they would actually obtain immortality. But Dr. Stan, when I listened for two days to the top scientists, physicists, geneticists, inventors, I realized that the top echelon of the world didn't know how to define the nature of humanity, did not know how to define the human spirit or what we really are on the inside. Their quest to conquer death and to somehow get immortality, I sat there in the crowd of people questing for this, realizing that in Christ, I've already been given that gift of eternal life. I talked to people in the crowd and asked them in between sessions for the scientists, well, what about Jesus and what he said at the graveside of Lazarus before he raised him from the dead? He said that if anybody believed in him, that he was the resurrection of the life, if anybody believed in him, though they die, yet shall they live, and he raised Lazarus from the dead. And some of the people, again, scientifically minded, technologically minded, they were amazed that I even brought this up. It was as if, like, saying the name Jesus was taboo. One man said, Russ, you can say God, but don't say Jesus. 
it was kind of astounding to me because they're sitting there feeling as if they are grasping the cutting edge of all technology and that they're at the edge of history to where history somehow they're going to be the ones to create immortality and they couldn't even define it and they didn't want jesus to be in the picture just like no room in the inn two thousand years ago but we continue to share we continue to talk to individuals about it and we found dr stan that many of these men and women that came in from all over the world the first guy that sat next to me he was from amsterdam i met people from greece and from france and england and they're all looking for an answer but none of them knew when i mentioned jesus and his words that he is the resurrection it's as if nobody knew this and trying to present the gospel to them it was like they never heard this content before and i think that's part of what getting out the message and sharing with anybody and everybody scientists and physicists and geneticists these are the kind of guys that were there in nazi germany the scientists the cutting-edge geneticists but they were being drawn into a spiritual quest and dr stan on the stage in new york at the 2045 meeting global class scientists and technicians were on the stage and then right after them hindu gurus russian cosmists others who would then begin to tell the crowd that the gods in the heavenlies and the godmen of the past are desiring humanity to reach immortality and that they these supernatural beings would help the scientists reach immortality i was on the one hand stunned that the crowds that came to listen to scientists would then on the same stage within the same day listen to the gurus and to the theosophists and others describe how the ancient gods are coming back to help them reach immortality and to help the scientists it was an amazing unbelievable combination of top science and top demonic deception joined it was an amazing development in new york city that is captivating many around the world well you see russ and i'm sure you know this but they're looking for something they know there's something out there because basically it's not simply if you disbelieve in the god of the bible you believe in nothing you will believe in almost anything and basically there's this transition stage from believing in god to atheism and then there's the next step is of course that is accepting the supernatural of this idea that there's this force out there you can get in touch with without realizing this is a satanic force there's only really two forces in the world there's the force of the god that we worship and the other force it is a supernatural force this is a very powerful force. It influences and controls the hearts of countless hundreds of millions of people throughout the world today. But you can never tell when one of these scientists is going to have a personal experience. More and more people are turning to our Lord Jesus Christ and really having a supernatural experience. And we'll be back in just a moment with Russ Dizdar here at Radio Liberty. As we look at since 75 years ago, the Nazis, what occurred, what we need to know now is that today, what they did there, the spirits and, and the demonic realm behind them, as you said, God has gone worldwide. That development we see in the New Age movement, we see in the underground movement of what we've dealt with for 35 years, the satanic ritual abuse, and their goal of developing super soldiers and looking to the future of a new order. Now, when we look at the transhumanists, we see again, empty hearts searching to make an answer for death an answer for immortality and that without god and that promise of the dark side that they would become god well then we drop back one more step dr stan into what's happened today another what they first said was a shooter at capitol hill now they're not sure whether the person shot first she's now dead we don't know the story for sure on her just a couple of weeks ago the navy yard shooter and here after the shootings we have a man that told a number of people for days that he's hearing voices in his head and we're hearing more and more stories like this whether that's Holmes or Jared or other shooters and we're going to say again because of working with program shooters and assassins and knowing what that project was about and is about we're going to see more of that there is going to be more of that happening around our nation I think we'll hear about it more and more in Europe the concern of the dark side development as we have been sharing in conferences the rituals that we've dealt with we're now doing a conference here locally on satanic and all cult crimes 
We're having law enforcement friends that we know that are involved in working with us to unveil more of that. I just want to, again, give the report on the underside of what's happening, kind of like the below the surface of society, that dark rituals, summoning dark powers, in our estimation, is broader than any time we've ever seen, and more of that is coming. And we can, and the church can expect in ministry that more demonized people, more people needing help, more people coming out of bizarre stories of what's happened to them and where they've been taken, we're going to see more of that come as the next year unfolds before us. I'm afraid and don't like to bear the news, but I think we're going to see more of the shooter and anarchy-oriented things that we've been seeing in this whole last year that has alarmed many and have caused new controls and laws. And to mention the drug aspect, again, we look at biblical prophecy in the book of Revelation, and there is a clear picture that in the future, when God calls on a global scale people to repent, they won't turn away from the demon worship, they won't turn away from what we know is the Greek word pharmakon, a drug-based but yet spiritually connected use of drugs as it was in the ancient days. And here's what's happening, and we can look at this now, and we know this is going to be happening more, not just the meth labs that are across the nation, but new designer drugs, whether the devil's breath drug from South America coming up, or the new Molly, or varieties of the new ecstasy. We're seeing that thousands of kids are gathering at large concerts and large parties, and amazingly, we're seeing an arrogance of the satanic theme, luciferic theme, ritual themes on the stages by what are considered the world's top musicians and singers. And it's amazing to me that all of that is bypassed for the love of music, for the love of just fun, and yet it's beating the same drum. Demonic presence is involved, the signs and symbols of darker occultism is involved, even globalism. And then there's a sense of arrogance concerning it and their opposition to God, their love of sheer hedonism with the drug Molly. So when we look at this now, families, we're going to have to watch our junior hires. We're going to have to watch what influences, and we're going to have to really look more than ever at the music industry, the lyrics, who we're letting our kids listen to as far as the singers, so many of them on the kinds of drugs that are called gateway drugs, drugs that open doors to demonic presence and that allow demonic presence to come in and bring influence. And this now, on a global class with the music industry, millions of younger people in our local neighborhoods, in our local concerts that we're seeing coming in to here in Cleveland and other places. Just an unbelievable connection between the hedonism, the drugs, and the demonic agenda and kids coming out of this, whether just altered on a sexual basis, altered because of the drug-induced state from this new drug, not really new, but the drug Molly that thousands and thousands are taking, they're just experimenting, willing to take anything. And this tells me, Dr. Stan, that again, among 12-year-olds to 22-year-olds, college students, that there's a great hunger for something. There's a great emptiness in their life, and the message that God loves them, that God knows who they are, that God knows what they've been through, that Jesus has a love for them, a presence for them, a power for them, life. And I, and I want to say this, has the meaning. So many of the kids just partying till they puke and partying until they fall over or even lose their lives because there's nothing else. They don't trust politicians. They don't trust politics. They don't like what they see in the upper generations. So it's just a free-for-all. So believers more than ever, we have to ramp up all that we're doing to take a message. Most of these folks I'm talking about, whether in the scientific world, the young people in the drug world, by the millions, simply don't know the answer. They've not really been engaged with the gospel. Russ, you're going to have to remind me the name of your book. Oh, what's sure. the name of your book? It's called The Black Awakening with the subtitle, Rise of the Satanic Super Soldier in the Coming Chaos. And how can people get to your website, get to your information? The main website that takes them to everything is simply this, www.shatterthedarkness.net. And that'll give them tons to look at and materials and training courses are free and plenty of things there. Shatterthedarkness.net.
I know we share a lot of the things that are occurring and more of it's coming, and, but yet everyone, and I'm sure everyone listening knows that these things are true. These things are happening. But it's all by dark side spiritual design. The dark side has an agenda. It goes all the way to Armageddon, Revelation 19.19. And this quest, this dark side quest, or Revelation 12, where we have the mention that the dragon, Satan, this picture of this huge presence coming, seeks to lead the whole world astray. Biblical revelation gives the answer. It is dark side presence, seeking globalism. It will bring mass deception. If a person is vulnerable, if they don't know, they can be sucked into the counterfeit spirituality. Here's the bottom line. Counterfeit spirituality never leads you to Christ, never leads you to forgiveness, never leads you to the gift of God in Christ, and never leads you to a relationship with God. It preoccupies. The dark side loves to masquerade and preoccupy people, give them things, allow them to have things, and make them even feel superior for a time. The principle is deception always leads to destruction and the loss of life and the loss of eternal life. So this is why we would encourage even providentially tonight those listening that uh, maybe you've been embracing, well, you say spirituality. I once embraced spirituality when I was into occultism, when I tried to be a Buddhist. I wasn't raised in a church. I didn't know the answer until one person came to me and boldly, clearly told me about Jesus. He's alive. He loves me. He'll come into my life, change my life. 38 years ago, Dr. Stan, when Christ came into my life, that's what changed everything. I know what forgiveness is. I know what it is to know God, His presence and power. And that's what Jesus and the Spirit of God is summoning all individuals listening, that you can come. The Bible says, whosoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can come to Christ. You can experience His love and forgiveness and His presence coming into your life. There's a searcher. If there's a scientist looking and wanting to search honestly, go to the Gospel of John. Read for yourself. Let God speak to you, and you're going to find the invitation in there how you can come to know Christ and his power. Let's go to John, who's calling us from Spokane, Washington. Hi, John. Do you have a question or comment? A uh, quick question for Russ, please. Russ, what is the relationship between the involvement of psychiatry and the Black Awakening? Very good. Appreciate that, John. That's a good question. We can go back to 1947. G.H. Estabrooks, who was a world-renowned psychiatrist, hired by U.S. military, wrote a book called Hypnotism. This is not my material. This is theirs. He explains in 1947 how they knew, from the Germans, of course, Nazis, how to take a soldier, create a subpersonality. He even calls it multiple personality. Create a subpersonality, create an assassin, a shooter, create disinformation to subpersonalities, how to program them, how to trigger them, how to use them, and the main person not even know. Now, he describes this in a chapter called The Weaponization of This Process. And then G.H. Estabrooks, again, world-renowned, and I think in the bad way, but world-renowned as far as knowing, people knowing him. In that chapter, John, he says, what U.S. military needs to do is create these super soldiers in every department of U.S. military. Now, that's 1947. What they were doing in military, they simply acquired from the spiritual side of the Nazis and the learning. They acquired how to do this, splitting, programming, creating alter persons, triggering them, shooter, sass, back to 1947. That gives us any picture at all to create this in every department. My concern is this, that in every city, in every place, and by the way, there's many other psychiatrists many others in psychology that was drawn in to be those CIA doctors, those psychiatric doctors that would be involved in these projects, MK Ultra, Monarch, and the rest. They helped it on the military side, and then there was the sheer occult-oriented side that continued to spread from the 40s and 50s and 60s to where now, on the victim level, we're at the level of a number of millions that have been coming forward to talk about it. It's astounding, but there's the connection. And this gentleman's name was G.S. Chesterbrooks? G.H. G.H. Estabrooks, with an E, Estabrooks. If you go to Amazon and just put that name in, G.H. Estabrooks, or his title of his book was Hypnotism. If you get that book, you'll find a chapter where 
he describes the process of how to do it clear back in 1947. Wow. They've known all along what they were doing. Basically, we have a four CD set. It's called Operation Paperclip. And it's the story, certainly, of all the Nazis that we brought from Germany here to the United States. And some of them, of course, worked in the space program. But they never want to tell you about the Nazis who worked to develop chemical and biological warfare or another group that was working on psychological games, how to control the mind. There were about a thousand Nazi war criminals. Operation Paperclip, of course, we even there go into the rat line and how we helped somewhere between 10 and 30 or 40,000 Nazi war criminals escape to South America. But the Nazis were very, very skilled in this sort of thing that worked at it under Hitler, and they continued working at it here. And those programs are being used in our society today. In fact, they made a wonderful movie about that many years ago. It was called The Manchurian Candidate, starred Frank Sinatra and Angela Lansbury, as I remember, and certainly just how you could condition people's minds. It's not imaginary. It's real. I believe it's going on today. And I believe that many of the murderers that we're seeing today, sometimes they'll tell their people who evaluate them, I don't know why I did what I did. I don't know why. Well, the reason, of course, is they were programmed to do that sort of thing. Anything else you wanted to ask, John? Is there a way to undo, once they shatter somebody's mind, fragment it, and create this effect, is there a way to undo it? Absolutely, and that's what we found out. On those courses you'll see, when you go to the free courses, there's a one called Freedom Encounters. Freedom Encounters. Okay. That's 27 hours. That's a basic training on how to do deliverance, how to do the inner healing, how to break the programming, how to help people come out of it. And the good news is Jesus can bring them all the way out. There is some hard work that takes some time, but he can bring them all the way out of that and restore them. Okay, well, thank you very much. Well, Russ, you're on the front lines of this battle. What do you see happening? What is the response of people as you talk to them about these things? Because these are so so different than what they're getting through the regular channels. You know, it's, it's interesting to understand. I, I see this. Like the conference you and I were at, here's what occurs. That conference, when I spoke on the Black Awakening, on program shooters and all the rest, here's what occurs. A psychiatrist comes up to me. A psychologist comes up to me a lady who is a nurse in a psychiatric ward for children, and another one and another one in a psychiatric ward, a worker comes up to me all during the conference to say, Russ, we are dealing with these people you're talking about. They have multiple personalities. They have programmed. They've been demonized. And all the psychiatric community does is give them drugs. I just came back two days ago from Minnesota. We did a conference at Minneapolis, Minnesota. We were up there three days, and same thing. We meet the victims there. We meet people that have worked in the industry to say, Russ, yes, we have them. Police officers and others come up. Those who work in prison guard ministry, you mentioned criminals. Jeffrey Dahmer was a multiple. And we saw the inside police files and the pictures. He had a altar, satanic altar, in his home up there in Wisconsin, apartment, built out of human thigh bones, Dr. Stan. The media didn't tell us that side of it. They didn't tell us any of that. He was a multiple. Ted Bundy was a multiple, and so was John Wayne Gacy. So you have criminals, and many of the men end up with the programming inside and the killer instinct inside and the ritual abuse they went through. They end up killing, and they end up being serial, sadistic murderers, as was Jeffrey Dahmer. So we have this happening in society. We have more and more. And when I was in police work and at the academies, the officers are told not to tell the public about the satanic side of it because it would scare them too much. But the truth is there's so many of these killings and murders done, and usually officers are just told to take people that hear voices, take them to the psych ward, put them in jail or take them to the psych ward because they don't know how to handle demonization or multiplicity, and they don't understand the process. They only know to deal with the crime. But there's so much of it that is based on this demonization principle or on the victims of satanic ritual abuse and multiplicity, they end up doing stuff. So I think, as I've been told numerous times by prison guards and those who work in the prison and jail ministries, that they have a lot of men who are multiples, whereas in the psychiatric wards, a lot of women have showed up by the tens of thousands. That's their estimate nationwide. 
And basically, unless we understand that most of these or many of these people are, are certainly they are spiritually involved, unless we approach this from a spiritual point of view, we can't approach it intelligently. And yet, of course, this uh, gentleman who I th- went into the into this government office and shot a dozen people within the last couple of weeks, he was pleading, he was calling, he was saying, you know, I'm hearing the voices, I'm hearing the voices, I need help. And they wouldn't give him any help. And you can't help but wonder, are these people stupid, or are they actually and actively encouraging this sort of thing? And we do know, of course, that there was a SWAT team about a minute and a half away from that spot. They wanted to go in, they could have taken him out, and they weren't allowed to. And we do not know all the intricacies of what's going on, but when you see that certainly they have a SWAT team with professionals are trained, and yet, of course, the police will not allow them to go in and save human lives, we have to ask, why? Well, I believe that there's demonic forces working certainly within every aspect of our society. I believe we're involved in the spirits of battle, as I said earlier, for the souls of men and the survival of Christian civilization. What a unique opportunity we have at least to get our people understanding. And these people, my understanding is that Jeffrey Dahmer actually converted to Christianity in prison, but that he was killed shortly after that. Did you hear that story, Russ? Yeah, we, we heard the same stories, and we heard that he did turn and that yeah he was killed by another inmate that was in for murder already it's hard in prison like that but the unbelievable story on jeffrey dahmer he lived where i'm living right now where i've lived all my life he lives probably 30 minutes from where i live and grew up the same years and yet he ends up doing what he did and it's a combination of demonization and trauma in his life Well, we hear the stories, and I think it's important. I know a lot of your listeners want to know what's happening in the world, and and we all agree. Every conference, every place we go, we all agree, time is short, that it is getting worse, and there is a reason for what's occurring in the world that we're living in. The other side of the story is that Jesus is still saving people, delivering people, helping people, that God is guiding and leading. Uh, This is why we went to Germany. This is why we went to Poland. This is why we went to France. God still loves everyone. God still loves the world. And the good news is that whosoever repents, turns to Jesus, can find that salvation. And that's the real exciting side from us, is to be able to share Jesus and see him at work in lives, and see demonized lives delivered and people made whole. We've been to Germany, Poland, and France in the last year and a half, and really interacted with the folks, especially in France, deeply in Poland. We really love the people. It's though, on the one hand, especially in France, it's like they've knocked out any real public talk and message about Jesus, that they want that to be a private thing, and the people are left with hopelessness. I asked numerous individuals as we encountered them, what is your hope? Well, you just live, and then you die, and you go to the earth. There was a real hopelessness there. In Poland, I really felt for the folks because the simplicity of the gospel is obscured. They've been a battered nation. Yet I met folks that loved Christ. In Germany, they still feel ashamed concerning the past and what happened with the Nazis. And yet the answer for that healing is in Christ, too. The belly of the beast is still Europe. More is happening there, and more a sense of the spirit of Antichrist is there than even here in the United States. Well, Russ, I want to thank you for everything you do. I appreciate so much your willingness to come on the program with us, and God bless you, Russ. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Stan. God bless. Good night.